the world as we once knew it is collapsing. And with that collapse comes an opportunity for something new to be birthed within you. Join me and my dear friend, Sherry Ame, for a conversation that will open your eyes to the possibility found within the chaos we are currently experiencing in our society. Tune in and learn why as leaders right now, we must choose to live in the uncertainty instead of clinging on to what's comfortable. You'll also learn how the business that you built may have been built from your trauma and how that gets to shift. Why healing your trauma is crucial to reach the next evolution of your leadership. The importance of understanding who you are beneath the branding and the masks. Why you may feel like you're in the midst of an identity crisis and how to embrace it. And what it truly, truly means to wake up during these times. Now, if you've been experiencing the dissonance between who you once were and who you are becoming, you will definitely find this episode helpful, and it may just provide you with the hope that you've been searching for to support you through this massive transition that is taking place both in your external and internal worlds. Sherry Ame is a creative visionary, storyteller, and entrepreneur. She's the creator of Exploring Hyperdimensional Intelligence, How to Avoid Solomon Syndrome for Leaders Navigating an Ethical Crisis. The accumulation of years of research examining the intersection of science and spirituality and the impact of advanced technology on humanity. Her work is a contemplative and transformational exploration deep into the conscious mind of what it means to be a highly advanced human walking the planet. As a near-death survivor with over 20 years in emerging technologies, Sherry creates an immersive environment to navigate an unfolding identity crisis and awaken cellular memories of humanity's true origins and purpose. At the core of her research is the question we must ask ourselves. If we knew who we really were and where we came from, would we be able to handle such an extensive amount of knowledge, wisdom, and truth? Sherry has spoken alongside some of the top surgeons, engineers, and technology experts in the world. She has been a featured guest on the Dr. Oz show and Megan Kelly today, as well as ABC, Fox, NBC, NHK, Japan, Forbes, NASDAQ, and Inc. To learn more about Cherie, visit CherieAme.com. That link and more will be in the show notes. Now, if you dig this podcast and you want to connect, connect with me on Instagram at I am Ruby or Twitter. You can also join my telegram group, rubyfreeman.com forward slash telegram, but even better yet with what's going on in the world today, social media is a hundred percent uncertain. And I want you to understand that right now, these platforms can be taken away at any day and it is coming. So if you really want to stay in connection with me, go to rubyfreeman.com forward slash connect to join my email community. That is the guaranteed way that we can stay in connection if shit goes down. You can also text hashtag potent truth to 1781-336-0160 to stay in touch via text message. Now, whether you are a loyal listener or you're brand new to this podcast, please take a moment to download a few episodes right now and drop a rating and review on iTunes. Every single rating, every review helps get this podcast out to more leaders around the world. And if you have yet to get a copy of my new book, Potent Leadership, what are you waiting for? Go grab a copy today, potentleadership.com. Now it's time to uncover your true purpose during a time of great uncertainty with my dear friend, Sherry Ame. Beyond the narrative, underneath the veil of illusion and deep within your center, therein lies potent truth. Welcome to Potent Truth 
where today's leaders, change makers, and light carriers come together to question the narrative, arrive at potent truth, and lead with sovereignty. What is potency? It's who you are beneath the masks, facades, and protective gear. It's the medicine humanity yearns for, cries out for, prays for, and needs. Your potency is what sets you apart, magnetizes your following, and creates movements. Join me, Ruby Fremon, for weekly guidance, channeled messages, and potent conversations that will take you on a journey of self-discovery. I am here to guide you to a place of unraveling the programming that's been keeping us stuck for generations, unlocking potent truth and expressing it through sovereign leadership. It's time for change. It's time for potent truth. Hey leaders, light workers, way showers, and those who see themselves as the ones who are here to pave the way for the new earth. I am so excited for today's conversation. Um, we are going to be diving into a deep conversation with a dear, dear friend of mine, a new soul sister in my life. Not really, but we'll talk about that story. Um, Cherie Ame. And um, let me tell you first. Let me start here. Sheree, welcome. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here. And what's fun is we actually first connected, I mean, I would say back around 2015, 2016, because that's when I first started. And I remember we had been in each other's peripherals on Facebook just from the coaching personal development industry. But me and you didn't really start connecting until 2020 when yes. the world events kind of brought our minds together. And I felt so seen and understood by someone. And it was just, it, it was such a relief to be able to talk to someone about the world's events in a way that isn't censored or has to fit into a box. Um, but we can actually dive into real conversations mm -hmm. about truth and perspective and what we're seeing. So Cherie, today's conversation, I have a feeling we're going to go to a lot of different places and where I want to start is just first for anyone who is new to Cherie, I may she is a near-death survivor, and she has a phenomenal story that involves seeing beings on the other side. So just so that we can keep this conversation super succinct, if you want to hear more about Cherie's near-death experience, just go to her website, Cherie Ame.com, and I'll have that link in the show notes. Plus, if you Google her, you'll find like a million PR <laughs> exposures on her and her story. So for this conversation, I mean, Cherie, where shall we go first? Where do you want to explore first? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I'm just so grateful to be on here, Ruby. So thank you so much for inviting me on here uh, to be able to speak in front of your audience. It's such an honor because I know you have interviewed so many incredible leaders over the past several years. So hello to everybody out there. I'm so excited to dive in and share more. And yeah, the big question, where to dive in? Um, I, I really do love how, I love how you brought up how we met. I mean, it, it really, we, we briefly met a few years ago, like you said, but it really was this 2020, 2021 shift that all of us are feeling all across the globe. Um, that has really shifted a lot of our deep perspectives on life, some of our deepest beliefs that we've held since we were little have been challenged, and even in many cases, shifted. Um, and so I know for me, what it really did was it really made me go deep into my soul and and humble myself, like really, truly 
humble myself and to be willing to face really, really uncomfortable uh, either past beliefs or observations I had about myself and the world. Mm -hmm. And that's where the really humble piece comes in because it's not easy. And I know in the work you do, you know this, you know, personal development work is all about being willing to see those parts of yourself that maybe you've just hidden, mm -hmm. you know, from the world for so long for fear of ridicule, neglect, abandonment, whatever it is, uh, shame, guilt. And, you know, part of the work of personal development is being able to face those things and heal them, alchemize them, right? Convert them into uh, beauty. You know, you refer to it as your sacred wisdom or your sacred medicine. And, um, you know, the, the wisdom of your soul, the song of your soul. And that's where so many of us as entrepreneurs and leaders get our momentum from, right? Because we've done this deep inner personal growth work. Um, but 2020 and 2021 rolled around. And even those of us who have felt like we have done such inner work for decades now, we're still challenged at our core. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, part of the shock, I think, even as, um, you know, I'm sure you identify as this as well, but we are very high performance, you know, high achievers. And I know for myself, I always have been. Um, and so I really had to dive into that a little bit more and learn how to get to know maybe a side of myself that wasn't the high performer, that wasn't so used to like giving of myself to others all the time. And it took like self-care, like the concept of self-care, it took it to a whole other level for me because it wasn't just, oh, let me just rest on some days that I'm not like out there, you know, um, serving the world and, and doing podcasts and interviews and speaking on stages. This was like, oh, okay, I'm going to be flat out, like tucked under the bed for, you know, maybe even a year trying to wrap my brain around what in the world is happening to me on the inside. Mm -hmm. So I just think that's kind of like a beautiful setup to, I think what both of us have really been through. Um, and so I would love to um, maybe dive there. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't mind, I'd love to actually read a tiny, tiny script of something that I wrote that is going to be coming out in my work very soon. And I think it really sums up what um, so many of us are going through right now. So are you okay if I read that really quick? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. It's really short, but um, so it says, how did we as leaders move confidently through the rapidly evolving world filled with chaos and uncertainty? Where did we belong in the midst of aspects? Oops, sorry. Where do we begin? Where do we belong in the midst of aspects of our former lives collapsing right before our very eyes. Remnants of an old world became less visible by the months, weeks, days, and hours. We were the engineers, scientists, special ops, physicians, surgeons, builders, entrepreneurs, visionaries and golden wizards of the world. The ones who weren't afraid to see the not so beautiful sides of life. The battling factions for power 
and control over humanity. Many of us were the unsung heroes and the ones taken for granted as others filled their minds with life desires for fame and fortune. We were the ones who looked out for the well being of our children, siblings, parents, and grandparents. The ones who upheld the values of human existence and life on earth. Mm, that is beautiful. And it resonates uh, on a cellular level. You know, this is where we find ourselves right now. And I know you and I find ourselves here. And I know a lot of our listeners are finding themselves here. And it's really interesting because, you know, that old world that we once knew is disappearing like sand through our fingertips. And what comes before us is the great unknown. You know, there may be a so-called agenda. And with that, there's a great unknown as to how things unfold and how humanity shows up during these times. I mean, anything can shift. And for me, it feels like we are living in the greatest time of uncertainty for our generation and you know things like our identity and who we are like these things that we gripped on so tightly to in the life we once knew things that we thought we were so certain of all of a sudden are uncertain mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people most people are very very uncomfortable with that they're so uncomfortable that they'd rather continue um, pretending as if everything is quote unquote normal or the same or nothing shifted because it makes them feel safe. Whereas people like us, we are brave enough to just be in that unknown, in the uncertainty of it all, um, while really taking ownership for the only thing we can take ownership of, which is ourselves, mind, body, and spirit. Absolutely. I mean, that's so well said. Um, you know, we've all grown up in this construct of, you know, that held certain things in place in life, you know, certain authorities, certain processes, certain uh, core beliefs. And anytime that foundation is rattled, it can make you feel insecure. It can make you feel unsafe. Um, and I greatly understand that. I mean, you know, that was definitely shaken to its core for me in 2020. Um, but it also took me back to my near death experience, you know, which happened in 20, April 2020, uh, I'm sorry, April 2010 and 10 years prior. And it's like overnight, you know, I landed in the hospital, uh, coded, you know, my heart stopped and uh, the entire emergency room had to attempt to resuscitate me and were not successful in the first several minutes and had to continue with CPR for literally over 90 minutes. And even after those 90 minutes, I still had no heartbeat. And so, um, you know, it took multiple hospitals. It took, you know, my husband unknowing for four months you know, whether or not I'm in another state at another hospital and he's driving back and forth every day and he is not knowing for four months if his wife is going to survive. And we were newly wits. Okay. So this rocked the foundation of my life, my husband's life, my entire family, all of my friends all of my doctors, you know, and the uncertainty was so palpable. 
and you had some people completely holding on to hope for this like less than one percent chance of me surviving for months and then you had you know do we start preparing for her funeral so it was like the ultimate of uncertainty and even though i'm still sitting here today with with you and and your audience um by the time i got out of the hospital four months later and had to spend the next five years on a bionic heart life support device that i literally had to lug around um, it was internally implanted in me and it had like 10 pounds of equipment outside me that i actually had to live with for five full years until my heart transplant so that was a whole other level now of like complete uncertainty like am i going to even live on this bionic heart because it's an electronic um am i going to make it through the night you know um is there hope for my future can i dream again one of the toughest things that i did not even realize had become such a block for me when building my brand later on after i received my transplant heart transplant and recovered i could not plan for the future i would work with coaches and they would be like well what do you want to create in five years i was like what are you talking about i'm like i don't know if i'm going to be here tomorrow and so what many people didn't realize is that as i was building my brand and, and growing online and and getting featured on television and and living in awe the difference was i was living in the present moment and even though I may have shared it a few times on my live streams, I don't think anyone can understand what that means until you actually have to do it. And one of the things that's so interesting about this time is we are being forced to live fully, fully in the present moment because we have no idea what tomorrow brings, what a month from now brings, what next year brings. You know, some people are even in so much fear, they're like, is there even gonna be a next year? Is some catastrophe going to happen? Is some big event gonna happen? So it really reminds me of that level of heightened, like heightened i don't want to say low grade because it's kind of above low grade but like mid-grade fear that just doesn't go away and it becomes like this new level of normal and i'll tell you it wasn't until i finally got off the bionic heart had that explanted removed from my body got the new heart transplant and i had to walk around now like totally healthy without any medical equipment attached to me. Yet it took a few years for my husband and I to adjust to no longer living in that mid-grade level of fear because we had done it for so many years. But see, if you had asked us then, we would be like, no, we're doing good, we're fine. So there's a couple of things that you know i think that you brought up that's really incredible is that everyone's at this different place and so some people kind of have a sense that something's going on but they don't know what to do about it they don't know how to speak on it right there's like confusion in that level then there's those that 
are still so in the mode of performance, getting by another day, like one foot in front of the other, that they feel, they feel the tension, but they're not aware of it because they're still so focused on survival. Those years that I was going through this whole recovery surgeries, it was like pure survival, right? And so um, it's interesting. It makes it very, very difficult um, to communicate as a leader the way we are used to. <laughs> because we used to communicate with our audiences based on, you know, okay, what are you looking to do? Are you looking to be a leader? Are you looking to grow your brand? Are you looking to write a book, right? Now we have this trauma induced distortion at levels we as a society have never, I don't want to say experienced before, we've never seen it so clearly with our own eyes to be aware that it's happening, mm -hmm. to see with their own eyes one thing, to feel another with their body. And then this confusion of cognitive dissonance, like really at play here. And that is where that internal battle starts to struggle. And what's happening is it's breaking up friendships, it's breaking up families. Um, it's, like I said, it's making it extremely, extremely difficult um, to communicate in ways that many of us just are not used to. And so, um, you know, when I talked earlier about this whole journey of self-care, but on a deeper level, it really, I really truly believe that to begin to even understand what's happening or to somewhat make sense of something that's not going to make sense right now, um, it's more about, you know, like you mentioned, going within and putting the focus on our internal world, taking a hard look at what is triggering you, what is bringing up maybe some emotions of anger or fear or um, not getting out of bed. I mean, I know that feeling of being so afraid that you just don't even want to get out of bed. And it's, it's so scary, you know, because you want one word, you want one book, you want one pill maybe to just make it all go away and help you get better and get back in the game. But that's not, that's not what we're playing right here, <laughs> right? Like something has shifted, whatever you want to call it. Um, the realms, I call it, have shifted. So this is not like any other year. Each month is not like any other month. And the best way that you can move through this in the most empowered um, way, filled with vitality and health and wellness and courage and strength and, and knowing wisdom, deep wisdom, is be by beginning this process of slowing down. And like I mentioned before, when you are a high performance, high achieving leader, entrepreneur, speaker, whatever, whatever industry you're in. But when you are a high performance person, it's the most challenging thing to slow down. And I get it. 
because I've had to do it so many times in my life and each time it's difficult. But the beauty in that is that you really do find the inner strength and the courage and all of those gifts to allow you to propel yourself um, into chaos with such precision and, and your own sense of security that it doesn't actually matter what happens in each moment because you are so secure in your foundation and who you are and your purpose and your mission here on the planet that the world could be collapsing around you but you know exactly where you're going mm. yeah <laughs> yeah wow um feeling that especially the slowing down and surrendering as a fellow you know high performer high achiever a i feel like the past three years of my life have called me to slow down and every time i slow down there's even more to surrender and this year really brought me to moments of like a complete pause mm -hmm. um and it's tough it's it feels tough to pause in those moments especially when the world feels like it's collapsing all around you it's also tough to pause in those moments when the world is collapsing around you and you see other people, um, you know, doing things and, 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 and moving forward or seemingly moving forward. It, it can be frustrating. And then on top of that, in those pauses, noticing how your perspectives might be shifting the way you observe things might be shifting um, what you see in yourself might be shifting your values might either shift or become more amplified for me they became way more amplified and it really uh, challenged me to face the life that i had been living face the life that I had been creating, even face the life that I had been chasing um, personally and professionally. And, you know, it, it felt like, and we've talked about this, it, it did feel like an identity crisis. It felt like, like, am I changing or is the world changing or is this a bit of both? Like what's actually happening here? And in that knowing that then your leadership is going to change, your brand is going to change, your business is going to change, like everything is changing. Um, and I know you've been going through the same thing. You're actually um, birthing what is the next evolution of your brand, of your messaging, of your business. Um, so I'd love to just speak on this identity crisis that I think much of humanity is going through right now, but not enough people are talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the identity piece is huge. Um, and one of the things that really um, started my journey of realizing I wasn't aligning with my brand or what I was doing anymore was um, some events that happened in 2020 made me realize that um, a lot of, you know, I was dead for over 90 minutes. <laughs> and so I really, you know, people always say, wow, you know, you're so lucky you weren't brain dead or had all these other complications. And absolutely, yes. Um, it did take me a while to kind of get back into entrepreneurship. It took me a lot of years to be able to like sit at a computer again, understand apps and all that stuff. Like it was much more difficult for me to learn than it was my whole life. 
and so it's all it's come back now and now I, I learn very quickly but there was a process of rehabilitating myself that people really couldn't see at the time um but one of the things that happened was I started re realizing that my memories a lot of my memories from before my near-death experience had been wiped so a lot of stuff a lot of the medicines that you are given when you have open heart surgeries have a form of also amnesia. And so your memory gets wiped, obviously, so that you don't remember, you know, like maybe if you woke up in the midst of surgery or whatever it is, you know. And so they give you a lot of powerful drugs, which also took years to get out of my system. But it wasn't until 2020 that I started really getting triggered, like by a lot of things. And I, it just was building, it was mounting. And I didn't started to not feel like myself. And then I started kind of trying to piece together things that I had experienced along this like couple of years since we met, you know, 2015 of building my brand and being in and out of different industries. So I was, you know, at one point teaching branding. At one point I was speaking in multiple different industries. Another point I actually dove in, back into the tech world, which is where I had built my entire career prior to my near-death experience. A lot of people don't realize I lost my tech firm when I was in the ICU because it just, I had a lifetime of recovery ahead for me. So I had to close down that business and sell parts of it. Um, but that was my career for 20 years. I was just in tech, total nerd, and um, a very different side of me that most of the public sees now. Um, but I just felt this calling to kind of, like now that I was getting better, I just felt this calling to get back in tech. And so I listened to it and I ended up in learning about blockchain. I worked for a blockchain startup firm. Um, so I learned about blockchain for supply chain logistics, global supply chain logistics, um, and you know was introduced to cryptocurrency and that whole field. So I ended up traveling around the world, just really speaking about this new technology or new, and, um, and, you know, to companies and CEOs uh, in different countries. And I had a blast doing it. Um, but somewhere along the lines, I think just being behind the scenes and seeing so much, so many things happening, um, whether it was in the fintech world, whether it's just being on Wall Street, you know, my network exposed me to a lot of technology being built very, very quickly. And there was this alarm that just kept going off in my head and it had to do with data and big data. And these are things that I was always aware of years ago in my career. And I was well aware of it when I got onto social media. I was actually one of the very late, late people to ever join social media because I was so aware of big data. But after everything happened and I was disabled, um, social media was just the only thing I had to really connect me with the outside world. And so I just kind of was like, whatever, I've already died. Like, <laughs> You are, everybody knows everything about me anyway. So let me just charge ahead. But then in being um, back into the tech world, I realized how much it changed. And I realized that I ended up coming against my um, values, like my values, my core, core values, like at my soul, at the core of my soul were being challenged, like constantly. And it, I started to not feel like myself. So I took a break and in that break was, it was, before, it was about a year and a half prior to 2020. And during that break, I really felt lost. It's like I was going through an identity crisis, but I wasn't seeing it at the time. 
because 2020 hadn't hit. Um, and I had had all this knowledge that most of my community wasn't really interested in it. You know, um, tech is very, can be very complex, can be very intimidating. So I had a lot of stuff in my head that wasn't sitting right. Um, yet I also am in tech and I believe in tech and tech saved my life. So I really was very, very confused for a long time, not knowing where do I fit in? Okay, like, so the industry I've been in my whole life tech is now starting to clash with some of my deeper ethics, values and integrity. And I started to feel like I just didn't belong. I mean, my brain really went to some pretty deep places, you know, where I just kept saying, why was my life saved? Why am I back here? Like, I really started seeing things about the world that I had never known before. And so I was very confused at why would my life be safe? Like, like, like God, you know who I am. <laughs> you know my, you know my values. You're going to go through seven years of like trauma for me, everyone around me, my doctors to save my life. And you're going to put me back in this world. And then on top of it, just to like pour salt on the wound, you're gonna show it to me with really clear eyes. <laughs> so I had a lot of anger come up um, and I couldn't express it to anyone. And so my body started breaking down. And as a high performer, I kept trying to push through it and push through it and push through it until I found myself unable to get out of bed for almost a year, almost a year. So when people are like inboxing me, I saw your, your TV interview with Megan Kelly on NBC Today. I saw you on Dr. Ross show. I'm in bed and I'm going, is this some sick joke someone is playing on me? I didn't even feel like myself anymore. And that was before 2020. And then 2020 hit, my dad passed away, all of the events unfolded. And that's when I started really feeling this anger rising up in my body. And I didn't know what to do with it. You know, I genuinely didn't know why it was happening, what it was about. And the, what helped me was finally diving into somatic therapy for trauma. And I will tell you, there were traumatic parts of my past that had been so locked away in my body for decades that never saw the light of day because I was such a high performance entrepreneur. And it was so buried that I was supporting all these other people with similar traumas, with no awareness, no awareness that I had been through similar things. <laughs> like, it blew my mind. And I was like, how is this happening? How am I, how have I done so much? And it's this trauma response. You know, we all handle it differently. Um, some people turn to drugs and alcohol. Some people, um, it affects maybe weight, you know, maybe they get, uh, anorexia or bulimia or other conditions, I poured mine into performance. So I was an A plus student, went to a great college, got out, worked at the best companies always, was always like the leading, like uh, employee, 
left after knowing how to do everybody's job and form my own company, hired the best of the best, you know, died and then came back and still, still somehow with disability, found my way to recover while still being a high performance. Like, I was mind blown. I was mind blown. And no high performing individual wants to hear that any of what they've created was built on trauma, you know what I mean? Or fueled in some way by trauma. Because we want to think it's our skills and our, which it is, so much of it is. I mean, I, 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 I do consider myself a, a smart individual, you know, my take, finally clearing the trauma, I'm finally able to admit I am intelligent. I am um, what I call hyperdimensional. I can see multiple realms. I can operate multiple things at once. You know, my brain can overwhelm some people, but it doesn't mean anything. And for so long, I equated all the things that made me excel or made me different or made me unique in my essence. All of those things were always attacked. My sacred medicine was always attacked growing up. And so the trauma was like this way of hiding all of these beautiful aspects of myself and then converting that into performance, but performance that allows me to fit in wherever I need to be. And it's like, that is not easy to like acknowledge. I mean, it was like humbling to my core. I just remember once I started the work, the therapy work so fast. And when I started clearing this trauma I felt I like collapsed to my knees and just cried and just released so much but what's so beautiful is through that release I was able to start birthing this entirely new body of work that is completely in the realms that the real me operates. And it's the realms that not everyone can dwell. So the biggest thing that I realized as a high performance individual was that once I cleared the trauma, I realized I don't need to be everything to everyone. And on top of that, I don't even need everyone to understand me because the greatest wizards of the world were often mocked and shamed. And yet, who were the quotes that we pass around all over Instagram and social media? And we, and we treat them like they're like, the kings and queens of, of wizardry and wisdom, yet they were the laughing mm -hmm. stock when they were alive. And so the trauma clearing really allowed me to see my gift and that my gift is sacred. Your gift is sacred. And that when we can fully honor that, we start to realize our place in the world. And it's a place that no one can touch. No one can touch. And as an entrepreneur, no one can copy it either because no one has your resonance. No one has the makeup, your cellular makeup on a DNA level. No one can piece together the experiences of your past, right? 
and express it through the lens and the perspective of your soul blueprint. And so the whole question of this identity crisis, what's really happening is you're bumping up against the most core values of your soul. Like you are being asked, why are you here? Like really, who are you without the mass? Like your book talks about, who are you without the mass? What does authenticity really, really mean? And you have to be humble enough and brave enough to dare to dive deep there. You really do. It's not for the faint of hearts. It's not for those that are looking for a thousand likes or more on their posts. It's not for you if you want to play the old game or if you're striving to do the fame and the Hollywood and, and the glitz and glam. Maybe this work isn't for you yet. But for those that are feeling the pull, that maybe can't get out of bed or are struggling to show up for their own podcast that they're doing or for their clients, or they're starting to do group programs and they're realizing, oh, my group, it's like a mess. Something's shifting. And it's not just the external world, but it's, it's you. You're being called at this really pivotal time in life to go within and to truly find, no matter what industry you've been working in, whether you've been a physician or surgeon your whole life, maybe you've been a nurse your whole life and you're realizing you don't align with some of the uh, processes in place and you're having to actually make a decision of whether or not to leave your job. You're going to be hit with an identity crisis because you've been doing that your whole life. And so my message to you is recognize it and don't be afraid of it. That there is so much beauty on the other end, but it's going to require that deep inner work. The inner dwelling is where you're going to come face to face with some things about yourself that you may have hidden. But once you tap into that, once you tap into that, it opens up a whole new world of possibilities. And that is the possibility of a whole new world with a whole new avenue of being, a whole new realm. So when we talked about at the beginning, you know, there's a whole uncertainty. Where's, where's the world going? Well, what if this is just a little shake up to the foundation so that we can let go of an old antiquated way of being and build something new that is based on truth, that's based on humanity, that's based on love, for the organic human soul and is not afraid to tap into discussions of ethics and where is that fine line we draw between technology and humanity, AI and being a human, you know? And this is really the culmination of the work I do. And it's called exploring hyperdimensional intelligence because I fully believe we are hyperdimensional human beings. We exist in multiple realms. And, you know, it's all about us as a humanity waking up to a deeper knowledge, a deeper wisdom, a deeper truth 
of who we are on this planet and whether or not are we alone here? These are some deeper questions that if you've never wondered before, it may be new for you. But if you've wondered your whole life about topics, you know, like existence of other beings, other planets, things like, is there more to life? What really is my purpose? This is the whole essence of the work I do. It combines all the years of work with technology, my speaking on stages with top doctors and surgeons around the world, um, my experience with um, emerging technologies. Um, my father was in the military and my love for spirituality and tuning into the essence of who we are. And I just created this whole transform transformational experience to really guide very top tier, high performing um, entrepreneurs and leaders through a process of breaking down this identity crisis, but also seeing what's underneath all of it. And that there's so much more for them to experience and that whatever work they've done up till now has prepared them for this very moment. And that where they are right now is just the beginning. It's just the beginning of using their skills to really step out and create a whole new beautiful world for humanity. So um, I love the work that I do now. There's no way I would have ever had the courage or guts to bring this to life um, without doing this deep work that was really opened up through this 2020, 2021 dynamics that we're all experiencing. So there is hope in the uncertainty. And um, I'm just so grateful to be at least on a side where I can breathe again and feel free again and feel safe again, no matter what's happening. And I wanna be able to guide other top performers through that experience as well. So mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah, <laughs> incredibly exciting. Um, congratulations on, on getting through that and getting out to the other side. And then um, I think for everyone listening, because so many of us are going through that, uh, that process, it's important to have faith, knowing that the process of being in the uncertainty of asking the big questions of being so uncomfortable that there are days that you cannot get out of bed, of being in that, the, the, the fear of the unknown of not knowing if there's a tomorrow, what's going to happen in the world, what's going to happen in your life, that this is actually a process that is taking you somewhere. And um, it's comforting to know that. And there's also a call to, to be brave enough to adapt, to shift, to change, to evolve, to understand that your old ways of operating, your life, yourself, your business um, are probably no longer resonant with your soul, with, with what's really calling you forward. And in order to answer that, that call, that call forward, we actually have to answer the call within first to dive deeper. And I know myself, I'm in that process. Um, it feels like a cocoon and um, it's incredibly uncomfortable, yet I get these like glimpses of the new that is emerging, that is being birthed. And I also want to say that this is a process that just can't be rushed. You know, it, it, it needs to unfold on its own time. Um, and for you, Cherie, I'm just, I'm so excited for you. This feels like a powerful and, and dare I say, potent new chapter for you and for the people that you're here to serve. But more importantly, it feels 
so aligned with your your life and what you've experienced thus far like it feels like you're taking all these different points in your life and they finally connected and I think that that's what this is about especially for those of us everyone listening who know that they're here to lead in some capacity that there is going to be a more profound way for us to show up and serve and it's most likely going to look very different than how we were serving before and it's going to require us to quiet down to slow down to pause to surrender even while everyone else is still moving and hustling and going and and clinging on to the old way it's going to call us into that quiet place very intentionally. So thank you for sharing your personal experience with that, because I think it just paints a picture for everyone listening and hopefully provides them with some hope and some faith, knowing that this process is leading them somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Um, You know, One thing I want to share is that I knew that it was time for me to dig deeper when I was sharing so much of my near-death story for years, years, and I was constantly sharing it, and I felt I was fulfilling the first part of my mission, which was to really just bring hope and inspiration to others, but then I reached this point where it was wearing on me. It was actually wearing on my soul. And I would be asked to like, be in these like TV series. And I like, couldn't bring myself to like, show up. Like I couldn't, it was a strain to just do the emailing back and forth. And it's because my heart was no longer in it. And the biggest takeaway I can share is that I felt like I was answering just a tiny bit of the true exploratory journey of why we're here on earth. And I felt like I had to give such watered down answers. And I started to feel like a caricature of my former self. And that's where I knew I had to dive deeper and uncover whatever was going on. But in that beauty, in that beauty I found, I found again, the Sherry that loves to go deep, that the people that want me to just speak faster (laughs) or make it simple, give me the cliff notes. That's what I've been doing my whole life. I don't wanna do that anymore. And so, yeah, doing that work really gave me permission to be okay birthing my true mission. And anybody that cannot dive deep or this doesn't resonate with, that's okay. That's okay. You know, I really truly believe that earth is a realm And we don't have to please everybody. We can love thy neighbor. We can respect everyone. But you don't have to live according to everybody else's perspective on life. Um, And for me, that was, it was such a huge, I mean, it took everything to another level. I mean, we all know if you're building a brand, if you're being a leader, we all know you got to be okay with naysayers and all that but this took it deeper and that's the work that that this year is really providing us it's a very painful like you said it can be challenging but beautiful journey and um and we get to be the forefront leaders you know on the edge showing others that they can do this too so thank you thank you ruby and everybody listening 
for allowing me to share um, this. This is big for me, just being able to come out and say this. So I'm honored I get to share this new work for the first time with you, Ruby, <laughs> and all your listeners. Yeah, I, I'm so honored that you were able to share here and also just in doing so serve as a guiding light for those who are also experiencing very similar and in the midst of it and in the thick of it and and feeling like there's no end to it. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your presence, your wisdom with all of us today. I deeply, deeply appreciate you. My pleasure. I appreciate you too. Thank you everyone for listening. <laughs> um, so for everyone listening, thank you so much for joining Sherry and I for another episode of Potent Leader or Potent Truth, where we are taking you on a journey to challenge illusion and lead with sovereignty. Um, if you enjoyed this episode with me and Sherry, if you found it helpful in any way, shape or form, if you gain some new insights, please do share it with a friend, share it with your community and feel free to tag us online. My handle is at I am Ruby and Sherry's is at Sherry Ame and those links and more will be in the show notes. Make sure you download a few episodes, drop a rating and review and check back on Monday for a brand new episode of Potent Truth. Aho family.